All right, hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about a few um, quick tips for receiving and commissioning jerkis and glass gauges and ball check valves. Um, the first thing you want to do when you receive a jerkis and glass gauge is retorque the bolting. Um, when we build the gauge, obviously we torque the bolts here and we do the hydro test here. When we pack these up, we put them in a crate, put them on a truck, and they drive to your facility. Occasionally what can happen is some of the bolting can vibrate a little bit loose. Additionally, depending on the gasket material, some of the gaskets can relax a little bit and you can lo you lose a little tension in the bolts. So it's very, very important. It's absolutely best practice to retorque the bolting before you do anything else with the gauge, before you install it, before you commission it, before you do anything. Um, we have a, a wall chart, and on that wall chart it has, it has the torque pattern, it has the torque values, um, so you know exactly how to do that to make sure your gauge is in the best condition before you install it. Um, additionally, when we're talking about retorquing, um, standard assemblies are like this with your gauge and your bolts. We also offer gauges with spring washers. They're also called Belleville washers. Um, and what these washers do, they're contoured. And when you tighten them down, they put some positive force or strain on the bolting. And that can eliminate some of the need for the retorquing. Um, and so this is always a good accessory to have. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with these. A lot of people use these as standard all the time. Not everybody does, so it's something to think about. Um, additionally, I want to note that retorquing at reseed is different than hot torquing. In hot applications, what you want to do is you want to install that gauge, get it up to temperature, then isolate the gauge and drain it per your site requirements, and then, and then retorque the bolts at that time. At high temperatures, things can relax, things can expand, and so it's very important to retorque the bolting at, up at that operating temperature. So if you have a hot application, what you should do when you receive it is retorque it first, then install commission and do all that stuff, then hot torque it, and then you're in the best position to go forward. On each one of our gauges, we put right on the glass window, we put a torque value sticker here. Um, the, the actual torque value depends on the gauge series. Again, that same information is on the wall chart. And that will tell you for exactly the gauge what torque value you want to use. Additionally, we etch that right in the tag on the nameplate. We put the torque value there. So we put it in a bunch of different places to help everybody know what the appropriate torque is for that specific gauge. Additionally, it's best practice when you have a glass gauge to have a safety ball check valve. This is a traditional style safety ball check valve. And this is our 360 series ball check valve, which I'll talk about in a moment. One thing that can happen on these traditional style ball check valves is this handle can be very hard to turn, especially the first time you're trying to open the valve from the factory. Obviously, when we build the gauge, we torque everything down. We have it all nice and snug in there, so nothing leaks. Um, what we do is we've just, we've made a little cheater tool like this. There are tens of thousands of these out there in the world. The idea is just to get you a little extra leverage. Um, you can see these handles are relatively small for the force required to turn it. So something like this just gives you extra leverage. That's perfectly fine. Um, the other thing you can do is you can loosen this, this stem nut a little bit. Um, that will relieve a little bit of the pressure. You don't want to loosen it too much because then you can get some leaking through the packing. Um, so we recommend have a cheater tool like this get you some leverage to crack that valve open. Do that first, and then if you have to, loosen the stem nut. Additionally, on traditional ball check style valves, they have a ball check in there. It's very critical to the function. We put this tag on every one of these valves. Um, this tag, it, it, there's a QR code that links you to the IOM and the wall chart. Um, the valve commissioning it has a little quick reference procedure on here. It's very important to commission these valves properly so the ball check doesn't seat when you don't want it to. That specific problem is eliminated with the 360 valve. On the 360 valve, this valve is closed. To commission it, you turn it to the bypass. When, you're, when, the gauge, when the level in your gauge is equalized with the level in the tank and you're ready to run, you flip it around to run and you're done. That's it. There's no quarter turn. There's no special instructions. It's very, very easy to commission a 360 valve. If you would like more information on Jergeson traditional style safety ball check valves or the Jergeson 360 series safety ball check valve, please visit jergeson.com and head over to our video library. In the video library, you'll be able to view the traditional style commissioning video for safety ball check valves, as well as the Jergeson 360 series safety ball check valve animation.